Hi, meteorologist Hayden Mahan here at the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City. I'm going to talk about the Utah water outlook as we sit here in May of 2023. As most of you probably know, last several years we've been in a uh, pretty prolonged multi-year drought uh, here across Utah and a lot of the West. And our water year started back in October and it was off to a pretty rough start in terms of uh, drought relief. You can see the figure on the left shows most of the state well below average in terms of precipitation, the orange reds and the dark reds signaling 30 to 70 percent below average precipitation. But as we headed into November, we did start to improve, particularly across northern and southern Utah. Central Utah still was below average for precipitation, but northern and southern Utah was around 130 to 150 percent of precipitation. But by the time we got into the winter months, December was much above average statewide. We had several atmospheric rivers that brought copious amounts of moisture. And so you can see the, uh, the light blues and the darker blues are showing 110 to 200% of average precipitation for the month of December. And then in January, it got even wetter. Most of the state uh, was over 200% of average precipitation. Some parts of the state, uh, 300 to 500% average precipitation as we saw several atmospheric river river events bring lots of moisture to the entire state. February was uh, a, a bit average statewide. Some parts of the state saw a little bit above average precipitation such as the north and central portions uh, but areas around the Uinta Basin and far southern Utah were a bit below normal so the state averaged out um, close close to average statewide but then March was very similar to January in which most of the state saw uh, precipitation in on the order of 200 to 500 percent of average for the month of March. And then in April, uh, really the only places that saw above average precipitation was around the Bear River Range Mountains, whereas everywhere else saw uh, precipitation anywhere from 30 to 90 percent of normal and even portions of far southern and central Utah, zero to 30 percent of normal. So year to date, October to May 10th, where we sit today, the Colorado River Basin is sitting about 200% of average for precipitation on the water year. Um, some areas such as southern and eastern Utah, um, 150 to 200% above average. But all in all, a, a really fantastic water year for the entire West. Um, lots of moisture and, and a record-breaking uh, winter in terms of um, snow water equivalent for the state of Utah. And a lot of this snow that did fall during the winter, um, it stuck around. Um, temperature anomalies from January to March show that most of the West um, was well below average for temperatures. And this meant that a lot of that snow that was falling uh, wasn't melting. So a lot of that water continued to pile up um, without melting off. And then when we got to April, we finally started to see some above normal temperatures, uh, particularly, particularly across southern and eastern Utah, and we started to melt some of that snow, especially at the low to mid elevations. But we still have a lot of snow, in, particularly in the higher elevations, most of the low and mid elevation snowpack is now gone, but as you can see, the highest terrain is still holding on to over 30 inches of water in some locations. Um, we still have more than half of our snow water equivalent left in Utah and southwest Wyoming, and we're not projected to melt off all of that snow until late June or early July. And one thing that's going to help uh, get all of that water from the high terrain to reservoirs, um, reservoirs is 
going to be our high soil moisture content. So you can see these graphs from the USDA are depicting um, near normal uh, soil moisture content for most of the state. Um, in fact, if you average the entire state, um, here the figure on the right is showing uh, soil moisture saturation around 80%, which is about the 75th percentile statewide. And now I do want to point out that our period of record only goes back to 2006, so not a long uh, period of record, um, but still we're, we, we do have um, really saturated soils uh, across the state, and this is going to help uh, bring a lot of that uh, moisture from the snowpack um, down into the reservoirs very efficiently. We can see here this graph from the RFC, the River Forecast Office is showing the snowmelt runoff volume forecast for April through July. And this is comparing the stream flows that we are projecting um, to the 1991 to 2020 average. And most of the state is going to see anywhere between one and a half, two and a half, maybe even up to three times as much runoff during this period as we would normally see. Now, all of this water has certainly helped out with drought conditions. The figure on the left is showing what our drought conditions looked like at the beginning of the water year. Most of Utah and Southwest Wyoming was in extreme or even exceptional drought. And now comparing that to where we sit today, the figure on the right shows there are no D3 or D4 drought conditions anywhere in Utah or Southwest Wyoming. In fact, there's only a small sliver of severe drought in central Utah, but most of the state is either abnormally dry or moderate drought conditions with a few spots in western Utah and far northern Utah and southeastern Utah um, completely out of drought conditions. Well, thanks for joining, and if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me. Here's my contact information, as well as my colleague Julie Cunningham and our senior hydrologist Glenn Merrill. Um, you can also email us down at the bottom, and our phone number is there, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube for the latest updates, or go to weather.gov slash Salt Lake City.